As for the rest of the objection, he's doing the same thing. And I. He's laying a foundation, which he's allowed to do. And I have no objection to that. I'll just ask. I'll stipulate to identification and ask. Your mic is off, sir. Stipulate to identification and ask that counsel not read the name of the exhibit. The court can look at that exhibit and appreciate my reasons for that. Didn't the court just rule I could do it? I'm confused. Is your microphone on? It was, but I guess I wasn't close. Say that again. You're confused? I'm confused. Okay. And I think the district attorney was going to stipulate to that. That's what he said. So stipulated. You may proceed. Okay, thank you. The question pending was, or I don't know if there was a question pending, but let me ask you, look at 414. The first page has what appear here to be copies of, what do we call those these days? Floppy disks? That will work. That's beginning to be like an 8-track these days, I suppose. Anyway, it's, you have the actual disk there, is that correct? That's correct. And there's a notation on those two disks that say. And that's what I'm objecting to. I'll stipulate there are two disks that he found. Actually, you are not allowed to proffer stipulations in open court if the. All right. Go ahead, counsel. Did the disk say on them, Janet expense backup, and, Janet cash expense? Yes, they do. That's followed by a number of pages that indicate, register, at the top. Correct. Is that correct? Now, as to 414 and the two disks, where did you locate those? 414, well, the only thing I located was the two disks. I see. All right, where did you locate the two disks? They were in that same filing cabinet drawer that was seized from the upstairs locked closet. All right, and you see 414, the printed pages. Are those pages that were printed out from the disk subsequent to your seizure? In a manner of speaking, they had to be imported into Quicken and bring it up as a check register, and then print that. Did you do that? Yes, I did. All right, good. So the rest of 414, you have the two disks, and then the rest of it, the printed pages, is it your opinion that these pages accurately reflect at least a part of the content of the two disks? That's correct. Now I'm going to refer to Exhibit 416. That is another one, if I'm not mistaken that the district attorney indicated that he was not going to address. And let me ask you to take a look at 416. It's been marked for identification, and the first page on 416, it says, Summary of Petty Cash Expenditures, correct? Yes, yes. And that's approximately two pages. And then it appears that the subsequent pages are receipts and other evidence of expenses that were incurred, is that correct? That's correct. Did you find these documents from 414? Let me withdraw that. Did you find these documents that are? I'm going to withdraw that. Did you find these documents which comprise 416 in your search? No. Did somebody else find it? No. Do you know where they came from? I believe they came. Objection. That's a yes or no question. That's true. Yes or no. Do you know where they came from? Yes. Where did they come from? Objection. No foundation. Sustained. How do you know where they came from? In meetings that we've had, I've came to know where these items came from. Okay. As a part of your job being an investigator in this case, you've determined where these items were originally obtained. Is that correct? Is that what you're saying? Let's put it this way. Did you personally seize these from any location anywhere? No. Did you witness them being seized? No. So you were informed where they were seized from? Yes. There you go. All right. Now, you wanted to, at the break, you indicated you wanted to clarify part of your testimony. Uh-huh. Yes. And I believe it was with regard to we had made reference to Exhibit 421, and I believe you wanted to clarify part of your testimony with regard to Exhibit 421. Correct. Are you turned to it there? Yes. That's the exhibit where I asked if the cover went. The fax cover went with the document. Correct. And you were not sure. And then I had asked you about the numbers on the top of the document, 
number 8012, and then it seems to be successive numbers up to 8020, with a number sign in front. Is that correct? Correct. Just handwritten at the top, right? Yes. Did you determine, during the break, whether or not those numbers were in fact on the documents when you actually seized them? Yes, I did. And were they on the documents when you actually seized them? No, they were not. Do you know who put those documents, sick, on? District Attorney Personnel. So you seized them, booked them into evidence, is that right? Correct. Sometime, apparently, they were withdrawn from evidence, from the booking. I'm sorry, from the sheriff's evidence, right? Correct. And the district attorney at some point had them and wrote numbers on them, is that right? Correct. And I take it, if you look at 422, there are numbers again written on the top, which are not necessarily in sequence. In fact, I could drop the word, necessarily. They're not in sequence at all, it appears, is that correct? Correct. But there are numbers that I think all start with the number 8? Correct. Four digit numbers. Were those numbers on those documents when you seized them? No, they were not. And your understanding is that they were later added by the district attorney's office? Correct. If we turn to 423, would that similarly be the testimony on 423? I see that the first few pages do not have a number, but it appears that maybe starting on page 5, there's a number starting with 70. Well, it's actually 7802 is the number. And there's some numbers following that that are not in sequence. Those numbers all starting with 7, are those numbers that also were added in that same fashion, to your knowledge? Correct. Okay, I have no further questions. As far as those numbers go, Detective, do you know if those numbers were added to the original documents? No, they were not. Okay, so these, do you know if these documents were ever scanned into a CD format? Yes. Were they assigned JPEG numbers, or numbers? Yes. And do you know if those numbers coincide to the scanned numbers? That's leading. Do you know? I don't. Overruled. The answer? Do you know? I don't. Okay. As far as Exhibit 420 goes, Your Honor, I spoke with counsel about this earlier. And I asked to have marked as an additional Exhibit 420A. I neglected to ask this witness about those particular changes that were made to that exhibit when I had him on direct, and with the court's permission, I'd just like to ask a foundation about 420A. Okay. All right. Let me bring up the notebook as well, or you still have the original. I have it. Okay. Detective, we've established that some of these documents are scanned duplicates of documents that were seized, is that correct? This is the end of it. Did you hear my question? Yes. Is that correct? Yes. And as far as 420 goes, do you know if 420 was also scanned into a CD format? Yes, it was. Okay. And did you do that? Or, actually, not scanned. I believe pictures were taken. Do you know whether it was scanned or pictures? Both. I'm going to object as leading and asked and answered, actually. All, well. Overruled. Next question. Do you know if it was scanned or pictures? Both. Okay. Some were scanned. Some were taken pictures of? Some were taken pictures of. All of them were scanned. Did you have anything to do with the picture taking? Yes, I did. What did you have to do with that? During a review of these evidence items after having seized them, I took photographs of certain ones which we thought were pertinent to the investigation. All right. Did you download those photographs to a CD? Our forensics personnel did. Okay. Do you know if those were provided to the DA's office? Yes, they were. And when you took photographs of those documents, do you know if you photographed every, for instance, let me give you an example. When you had a picture of, or a document that comprised more than one page, did you always photograph each page of that document? No. And why was that? I would have only taken photographs of the ones that appeared pertinent. In other words, if there were multiple pages stapled together or multiple pages together and only one of them was pertinent, I only took a photograph of that one pertinent page. Okay. And during the course of the review of this notebook, 
Did you look at 420 to see if each of those emails or documents that are in that exhibit contained all relevant pages for each of those documents? Do you understand the question? Can you ask that again, please? The question is, did you review the, these, the evidence notebook in this case that deals with exhibits number 420 through? Yes. I believe we've got 440, is that right? 420 through, 400 through 422, I think, at this point. Yes, I did. Okay. And did you find that exhibit number 420 had some pages missing? Yes. And did you then go back to the evidence and call out the missing pages so that it would be a complete exhibit? Yes. I show you exhibit 420A. Can you identify that for me, please? These are the pages that I went and pulled out of the actual evidence item to correspond with these photographs or images. Okay. So is 420 pretty much an identical copy of 420A, except for 420A has some additional missing pages? Yes. All right. Thank you. I'd ask, actually, we're going to hold off on admission of this additional evidence at this time. Those are all the questions that I have right now, Your Honor. Do you want to take your book? Yeah, thanks. Okay. 420A is now what you feel to be a more complete set of documents than 420, is that correct? Correct. And they are the original documents. All right. May I approach, Your Honor? Yes. I was given a copy. All right. So 420A are original documents. In other words, they were documents that you found in the condition they were actually in. Correct. During the search, they aren't photocopies. They aren't photographs. Correct. They aren't scanned. No. All right. There are paper clips on there. Why are the paper clips on them? Does that mean anything? Let me put it this way. Did you put the paper clips on them? No. These paper clips aren't on the documents themselves. They're on the sleeve. All right. Did you put the paper clips on the sleeves? Did not. Okay. Now, with regard to 420, how did you? Where did these come from? You photographed them, or you scanned them, or what? I'm not clear. These are either the photographs or the scans. All of the shaffle evidence was scanned. We also took certain photographs of them. Okay, I must say, I looked in there, and maybe I'm wrong, but I didn't see anything that looked like a photograph of a document as opposed to a photocopy or scan. Am I wrong? In 420. Well, I don't know what, how these items, this was done by the district attorney's office that put together the court exhibit book here. Okay. What I did is, I went and found the actual evidence item that I seized to correspond with this exhibit book. Basically you're saying you don't know how 420 was generated at all, is that correct? I know where the items came from. I don't know how they got into here. Alright, and then you don't know what the paper clips mean on 420A? No. Alright, thank you. No further questions. Would you look at those documents and see if you can ascertain any reason for the paper clips to be on those documents? I'm going to ask. That calls for speculation and asked and answered. He says he doesn't know. He's reviewed the documents as far as completeness, and he's testified as to that issue as to whether the documents had missing pages, and I'm, my question goes to that issue. And I object to a speaking. Yeah, I'll sustain the objections. Thank you. All right, I have no further questions. Anything further, counsel? You may step down. Call Detective Vic Alvarez, your honor, and he will be our last witness today. Come forward, please. When you get to the witness stand, you may be seated. You're still under oath. You may be seated. Good afternoon, Detective Alvarez. Good afternoon. If I may approach, your honor. Detective Alvarez, did you participate in the search of the home of Fred Mark Schaffel in Calabasas, California, on January 31, 2004? Yes. Did you see certain documents pursuant to that search? I did. Calling your attention to the black notebook which contains an exhibit that is marked as 402, there is a document that's dated the 12th of November 01 and appears to be a balance sheet. It's two pages. 
And as soon as I locate it, I'd like to ask you if this was a document that you seized. Yes. And you tell me, where, did you seize that pursuant to the warrant of Mr. Shaffle's home? I did. Where did you seize it from? It was in the upstairs office area of the residence. Okay. Was that area locked at all? No. Okay. And from where in that upstairs office did you seize that document? This was in the desk area of the upstairs office. Did it come from a file with any specific notation, if you recall? I don't think so. Okay. Looking at Exhibit 403, which appears to be, I believe we have 13 pages, plus a, 12 pages, plus a, looks to be a file divider. Did you seize that file divider and those documents pursuant to your search of Mr. Shaffle's home? Yes, I did. Where did they come from? These were also on, in the office area upstairs on the desk. There appears to be a file divider, a plastic file divider, with, fires brewing, on it. Did you seize that as well? I'm going to object to that, because they already laid the foundation without bringing in content, so this is irrelevant, and no foundation for content. Overruled. Proceed. Did you seize that as well? That's correct. And where did that come from? This was also on the top of the desk in the office area, second floor of the residence. Do you know where the contents of that file, were there documents inside that file? Yes. And can you tell me their relationship to the documents that you just identified? Yes. They appear to be emails. Do you know if those documents came from that file? Yes, they did. Okay. The one designated with that particular file marker? Correct. That's my question. Correct, yes. Moving on to 409, which appears to be a one-page document that has at the top, phone number, singular. It appears to have some phone numbers on it. Did you seize that document, detective? Yes, I did. And you seized that from Mr. Shaffle's home? I did. Where did it come from? This was also on top of, in the office area, second floor of the residence, near, on top of the desk, the desk in the room there. Okay. And then finally call your attention to Exhibit 419, which appears to be three pages of plastic sleeves with a check, check stub and check copy, it appears to be. Did you seize those documents at the search of Mr. Shaffle's home on that day? I did. And can you tell me where they came from in Mr. Shaffle's residence? They also came from the office, the second floor of the residence. Okay. Whereabouts? These were also on the desk area of the residence, or of the room. Okay, thank you. No further questions. Actually, I do have one additional question, I'm sorry. On a different matter, detective, pursuant to your investigation in this case. Yes. Did you interview a witness by the name of Cindy Bell? I did. Did you question her concerning her involvement as a witness in this case? I did. Did you question her specifically about the issue of serving alcohol as part of her duties as a flight attendant for extra jet? Yes. Did she tell you whose idea? Well, first of all, let me ask you a question. Did she tell you anything about Coke or about wine in Diet Coke cans? Yes. What did she tell you? She said she serves white wine in a Diet Coke can for Mr. Jackson. When he's a client of extra jet? Correct. Did she tell you whose idea that was to put white wine or wine in a Diet Coke can? Yes. What, whose idea did she say it was? She said it was either Michael Jackson's or Dr. Farshian's. Okay, thank you. No further questions. You know, I do have one additional question I neglected to ask. I was going to say, no questions, so we can go home, so I'll have to wait and see what happens. He was going to say, no questions. Oh, I'm sorry. I neglected to ask you the date of that interview, if you can approximate it. I don't remember. Do you remember the approximate month? I don't. Okay, was it? It's on, it's documented on my report. Do you have your report with you? I don't. You don't. Well, you might get to come back and tell us what date that was, then. Move to strike, your honor. Stricken. I'll withdraw it. Okay, thank you. In light of those questions, your honor, I have no questions. All right, pretty good. That must end the day, is that right? 
That's right. All right. And you heard what they said this morning. That it will be. The rest of the week will be a full week. So we'll see you tomorrow morning at 8.30. Remember the admonition.